Hello, everyone, and welcome to a gem of a secret podcast. My name is Donatella, my secrets, and my name is Coco Gem Holiday. <laughs> Coco, how are you doing on this uh, other episode, another edition of uh, Quarantine Gem of a Secret podcast today? Um, I'm doing really good on this bonus episode. I am. Yeah. Um, I have my cocktail as usual. I feel like I'm going to say that. What are you drinking time. tonight? So tonight I'm drinking one of our sponsors, just joking, um, <laughs> is the Corona Cherry Hard Seltzer Spike Sparkling Water mm. with zero carbohydrates. And I'm having the uh, Crook Marker Spiked Sparkling Tangerine. Um, this one is different from your typical hard cider or hard uh, sparkling uh, seltzers uh, because it actually has a bit of sweetness to it because I think it uses like a artificial sweetener or like maybe a... Uh, some sort of plant-based sweetener, which is nice. It's sweet. You like it. Nobody's ever heard of them. They're they're the white claw white claw equivalent. Yeah, but it's like more calories than a white claw. So like if you if you're like wanting to be skinny but not too skinny. <laughs> Mine is ninety. Yours is only eighty. That's mm. crazy. Oh wait. Oh, there's it, more calories than that. Yeah, which is weird because there's nothing strange. in it. Um, yes, that's what we spent the first two minutes of our mm-hmm. podcast talking about. Um, yeah. Our drinking problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay. So um, for this bonus episode, we wanted to talk about current events and popular topics. And so the first one that we're talking about is popular Facebook trends. Yeah, it seems like there's a new Facebook challenge or game every single day that we log on to Facebook because there is an influx of people online right now (laughs) not knowing what to do with their time. I know I'm one of them. I wonder why they're home. (laughs) (laughs) I know. What could be the reason? Oh, goodness. So we all remember the games back in the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was always that thirst trappy whore person. Just joking. That's not a thing. But there was always that person who asked for, you know, the 15th photo in your camera. And you have to post it. Brighten my day with the 10th photo in your Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And so that started it. Mm -hmm. And that was a thing. And then, of course, we rolled over into who is your quarantine when you just like tag a person's letter and whoever first comes up. Yeah. Like that was one. Or pick a color and then whatever color corresponds with a photo in your camera roll, post it in my comments below. So that's something that's been happening since this quarantine um, has been going on. And um, also the little like Pokemon trainer challenge that has been going on. So what have you participated in? So I participated in just the pick a color contest. Yeah. And the only reason, so this was crazy. The first 15 posts on my Facebook um, the morning of when we recorded this was all the color contest. Yeah. <laughs> like, I couldn't get... The thing is that there was no substance. So, like, normally, like, even with the, like, um, your corn team or whatever, you're like, oh, that's kind of funny. This person mm-hmm. got just sits at home or this one dies first or whatever. But this one, it was just photos of the same color. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah. ridiculous. You're like, know. oh, cool, pretty... <laughs> I, see, I see a lot of teal things. <laughs> I did. I, I chose teal as my color. Did you get I'm... any, um, like, nudes from it? Or, like, scantily clad photos? Um, I only checked, like, the first two and the last three. Oh. Um, well, because normally a lot of people posted their kids in teal, I guess. Mm. So, You're I mean... like, thanks, I guess. <laughs> thanks, I suppose. Well, I don't even Keep know... your crotch goblins to yourself. <laughs> no, I don't even know if it was supposed to be a, inappropriate or not. I just... I just wanted to see if people would actually comment. Mm -hmm. Um, Donna, which one did you do? I did the Pokemon Trainer Challenge because um, I recently got into Pokemon Go um, because I hadn't played it since the app first came out. And I lost my account and then I just stopped playing it for years at a time. (laughs) Uh, So it wasn't until recently, around the time that this quarantine started, that I was like, I'll pick up Pokemon Go. So um, in order to get out of the house... And in an effort to um, get some exercise, I have been walking around uh, this little park that is vacant and empty. I'm the only one that's there, and it's so nice. It's my time to, like, go around to some of the Pokestops and uh, and uh, collect some Pokemon and uh, put some Pokemon in gyms. And I'm really just getting back into that. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah, I did the Pokemon trainer one. What do drag queens do in their free time? They play Pokemon Go. Yes, yes we do. <laughs> and the type that I got was Psychic. 
<laughs> and if you want to see that, check out my Facebook. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so uh, I just think I just wanted to point that out because I think it's super funny that all of these games are like sprouting up so quickly, like out of nowhere. And all of them are like immediately viral. I think yeah. people are just so bored right now. And we, I mean, we get it. I mean, we're we're doing a bonus episode because we were, you know, more or less bored. So. Have you, I have a question though. Have you like gotten through like one of those where like someone's like posted it and it's like one of those challenges and you start doing it and you're like, do I really want to post this and be that girl after so many people have posted it? And then you like bail midway through trying to like put it together because I've done it now for probably about three of them. They're also, so one that we didn't mention is there's like, this uh, empty like cutout of like tattoos and like where they're at on your body and you like color them in and I started coloring oh. mine in and I was like is it really important for people to know that there are five areas <laughs> on my body that are colored in because that's the amount of tattoos I have and they don't take up a lot of surface area on my body so like is it that important for people to know this and I was like no it's not so I bailed like mid activity <laughs> no it's not <laughs> I, um, no, I haven't gotten that far. Um, the one I did, there was one like a week and a half ago. It was like questions about your partner. Uh That was just fun. But I like doing those because I just like, like to think about my man. But like most of the time, like, so the one about the quarantine, Uh like I actually did look at the questions and I was like, oh, this would be fun to know. And then I was like, oh gosh, I don't want them to get annoyed with notifications. Because yeah. I have notifications turned on because drag artists do. So we know if there's gigs or things we need to look at. Yeah. And I didn't want to post it and then have all my friends be annoyed that they were getting constant notifications. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got so many. Because apparently I'm the only J friend that everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, gosh, we're idiots. <laughs> so lots of Facebook trends that are going on because everyone's online and also um, something that has been on everyone's mind and all over Facebook lately is we got to talk about it Tiger King Tiger King Joe Tiger. Exotic Joe Exotic Joe Maldonado Pavadano Papa, Nina, Papa's on chair <laughs> <laughs> Nina Bonina Banana Fofana Osama Bin Laden Brown Jackson uh, yes so, Joel Maldonado Passage Exotic um, is uh, what is on everyone's minds lately because of this new docuseries on Netflix. Yeah, crazy. Carol Baskin killed her husband. She definitely oh, did. Oh, she definitely killed she her definitely husband. She definitely did. This is not slander, mm-hmm. I, but I saw the same documentary. Oh, and yeah. It, it just... His, her Sorry, the husband's family on the documentary yeah. were like... Yeah, she did it. She did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> and I've I've watched how she's um saying that next Netflix like slandered her a lot and I was like, "Oh, Carol, come on. Carol. <laughs> C- C- Carol. We know. We know you did it, Carol. Look here, Nancy. I just <laughs> I I saw someone post something today and I have to read it because I I actually screenshot it in the purpose of bringing it up during this podcast, but um they reposted someone's status that said, unpopular opinion, Carol Baskin did what you hoes only talk about doing. Killed her cheating ass husband, got rid of the body, took all his money, and found a dedicated third husband. Is it third? Oh, it was her third. Third husband. Yeah, it was. Wow. Third husband who knows not to look at her wrong. Carol may be a bitch, but she is that bitch. And all you cool cats and kittens wish you had that juice. Good God. I love that. That is <laughs> iconic. I want Carol to call me right now and be like, hey, Coco, you cool cat and kitten. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so it's so true. So, I mean, I hated her a lot of the time throughout um, the docuseries. But when it comes down to it, gosh, she was cutthroat. She was brutal. And they all were. They all were in their own respects. They were. Like, so let's talk about the sad part of Tiger King, yeah. which was when his um, second husband, when Joe Exotic's second husband died. I believe it was actually his probably like third or fourth. He had a few husbands before. Oh, that. good yeah. lord. Yeah. So, so Travis. So when Travis mm-hmm. died, mm-hmm. um, gosh, I hope you all watch that mm-hmm. um, at this You should have watched it. Seriously, it's all over the internet. Um, so, spoiler alert. Um, maybe we'll put a little sign about it. There's a spoiler alert. Anyway. Um, so, when Travis died, like, and then he got married again. What would, what did they say? Two months? It was two months after. Two months after yeah. Travis died. 
And then his first partner. And the funny thing is, this is so it's weird to me. Like, don't we all as queer people, queer men especially, know the guy who was like his first husband? Like, the guy oh, who Oh, yeah, John him, like, Finley? Yeah, yeah, like, we yeah. all know that guy. That I, guy is maybe so Maybe we don't all do, but we do because we're from Grand Junction. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've just met a lot of people with meth mouth, okay? Gosh, meth mouth everywhere. <laughs> and it's funny, like, I was talking to my coworker about the show, and I was like, well, he was just married to, like, two different people and whatever. They didn't really say that they did hard drugs. And that's because I hadn't caught up yet. And then, like, the next episode, it was all about how, like, Joe kept his men on hard drugs to make them not, like, waver out of the gay kingdom. Yeah. And, yeah. um... <laughs> I just think it's so ridiculous. Like, let's have this conversation, though. It is so ridiculous when, um, I get it, like, the the fantasy of the straight guy or whatever, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. Meth mouth isn't attractive. Like, I'm not going to be like, ooh, baby, you so sexy when all Mm -hmm. your teeth fall out. Yeah. Good Lord. Like, just to, because, I mean, that's what he was doing to them. Yeah, it was. It was. I I think, okay, so there's something that I want to talk about, too, especially with this docuseries, and there's a lot of people that are hating on it and not giving it much of a chance. Um, There's a lot of people that I feel are hating on it just because of the fact that it has gotten a lot of notoriety. And you know what? It is a sensationalized piece of... um, I don't want to say garbage because I don't think that it is garbage. I think it's something that's brought us a lot of entertainment mm-hmm. during this time of quarantine. I think it's a sensationalized um, piece of pop culture that will definitely exist for a very long time. And I think there's going to be more to come from this. But I think the most interesting thing about this docuseries was the people in it and how just incredibly human they are and how flawed they are and how they're all so very different and it exposes this part of the human experience that so many viewers are unfamiliar with there's so many people who are not part of the exotic big cat world and the dirty dealings that happen in it that you get to know these characters and you feel like you kind of like know a bit of them by the end of it and yeah 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 so who are some characters that. that you like really loathe well so here's the thing um and actually just to touch on your point real quick mm-hmm. the these characters actually did feel like characters in a TV yeah, show. Yeah, they did. It seemed, I have said it before. I felt like I was watching a mockumentary rather than yes, a documentary. I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually I super agree with that. Um, so the villain, obviously, John Lowe, I think his name John Lowe. Was. Yeah, or Jeff, yeah. Uh, Jeff. Jeff Lowe. Jeff Lowe. Yeah. yeah. Horrible human being. Um, and the thing is, I get it. If somebody stole my identity... For their ad, like for their political campaign, yeah, and not really stole the identity, just like s- signed my name on checks and stuff like yeah. that. Of course, I would be mad. I would be just as mad as he was. But like, I know that there was more behind the scenes things. But like, there were good because he kind of conned. He kind of conned Joe a little he bit in Joe. saying that he had money to take over the zoo when he didn't. You know, he was just an ex-con. He was just another scammer you know oh and i didn't like that overweight piece of garbage james. What's his name? james i hated james the one that rode on the jet ski at the end yeah james mm-hmm. seemed like a snake he was skeezy. I mean, gosh just he was skeezy awful <laughs> who did you hate um i loved to hate carol <laughs> i loved to hate carol it's so, it's so i mean i and in the end i ended up just liking her because like I, but I don't at the same time. Like, I'm still, I'm so conflicted about all of these characters. Like, for me, like, I saw a meme posted today, too, that was like, Joe Exotic deserves to be in jail. And yes, he does. He he euthanized some beautiful creatures. And, you know, also, apparently, you know, put a, a, a hit out on Carol Baskin, you know? And and so that's, that's something. But Joe is a charismatic individual to where you don't want to hate him. With Carol, it's it's kind of the opposite to where it's like you want to hate her, but in the end you can't. I her ambition or something is what like gets me to be like okay, like I I have to give her some respect, but at the same time I'm like she's a total criminal and total uh, scammer too, just like all the rest of these. Yeah, people. but I absolutely hate the fact that she just wore all different kinds of animal print to court. Yeah. That drove me up a w- That was enough of a reason to and hate And the flower you, crowns. And the flower oh, the crowns. the flower crowns are so stupid. Lana did it better. Lana definitely did it better. Give it up, Carol. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> uh, wait, so who did you like the most out of the series? Um, I really liked Joshua, the guy that was Joe's campaign manager. Oh, um, he was 
definitely in love with Joe. Yeah. Definitely. I like Joshua and I loved Saf, which I think it's important that we refer to Saf as his proper pronoun. Saf is actually a trans male and um, is does not go by uh, feminine pronouns. So Saf um, goes by he, him pronouns. So Yeah, screw important. the docuseries for not really wanting to acknowledge that. That would have been awesome for trans rights and acceptance. The guy lost his arm and you Mm -hmm. put it in there but yet you can't refer to the dude as being a proud trans man and hopefully i mean if he didn't want to be out for the series specifically obviously that would make sense i read something that it was common knowledge that he wanted to identify as as male and the reason why he went by staff is because his dead name was one that he didn't want to be referred to boo netflix boo so that's something that's something that they definitely could have done better there um but yeah no it's 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 sensational it's crazy it's something to get you to take your mind off these times and i think that's just important that we look at it as something that's not only entertaining but also if you're interested in the world of true crime it is a trip so i mean check it out Oh, I do like true crime so much. I know, and it was the weirdest type of true crime, too. So... It took you through for a whole ride. I honestly... So, me and Donatella have decided that we're going to do a true, true crime episode in the future. For this to podcast, where yeah. we tell the story like true crime. Yep. We do the research as much as we can, and we'll, we'll probably bomb super hard. We'll probably hard, do but... our favorite true crime stories, and I definitely have mine. Oh, I... Yeah. Oh, Hmm, I never thought about it, mm-hmm. but that's for a later episode. Mm-hmm. So we also wanted to so watch um watch Tiger King on Netflix. It's yeah. super great. No, they're not sponsoring us. We're just saying you should watch it because it's absolutely a trip. Um, but the next topic that we're going to talk about, and we're going to talk about it from a little bit of a different angle. We're going to talk about the Sherry Pie debacle yes. and the scandal and all the hurt. Yeah. So, um, I'll go ahead and start. So, I actually haven't been watching this season of Drag Race. So, I'm going to kind of do a little bit of an interview with Donna here because I haven't... Morally, I can't. I just... I can't get behind it. And even though... And we'll talk about this later. I know people that are on this season. uh, But it's just been really difficult for me to watch it because of that. And I don't want to diminish any of the artists or any of the... uh, any of the production staff or the crew or anybody who works on the show, because obviously that show makes a lot of money for a lot of people. And I don't mean to diminish any of that. So just just morally, it was just really awkward. So I, my first question for Donna is, how are they... I heard that they edited her, edited Sherry Pie out. So how do they do that? And then when she wins, because I know she's won a couple of the challenges, how have they done that? It's been awkward um, when she is clearly dominating a challenge and there's no way to edit her out um Mm -hmm. so that's something where you know when she's in an acting challenge what she's great at doing um she gets you know as much screen time so it's justifiable that she got the win you know they have to show that still for the episode so Mm -hmm. as much as they want to like cut down her runway and like cut down other things you know all the confessionals from her she still is a presence in the season, so it's nearly impossible. And she, from what we, I'm pretty sure, all know by now is that she will continue to be a presence throughout the season. Um, it's unfortunate, but um, it's also... I'm still trying my best to enjoy the entertainers that I am seeing um, on the show. Um, yeah. So, um do you feel like it's been disjointed because of that? I heard for some, like, mm. sometimes it feels like it's weird who's the top and who's the bottom because of it. I don't, I wouldn't say because of that necessarily. Um, I honestly, like, I don't know why people are disagreeing with a lot of the judges. I mean, there are certain decisions that the judges have made that I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? But I don't think that it really has anything to do with the Sherry Pie stuff. I think it's typical, like, you're going to have people who disagree with what the judges say and sometimes the majority of the viewers will disagree with what the judges say um i don't think it's really different from any other seasons i Mm. just think that it's weird that you have a very strong competitor who we all know is a very strong competitor that um is basically disqualified from the season and won't be you know having a chance at at that and it's i mean definitely for good reason but it's uh it's just a little it's a little strange episode to episode watching that um for any of you out there who 
have listened this far and you're like, well, what is this drama you're talking about? There's plenty of podcasts, lots of articles out there, but Cherry Pie was disqualified because she pretended to be, what was the name? Allison Mosby or something like that. So a talent agent who she scammed out multiple people um, in New York uh, who thought they were going to get their big break and it was just her catfishing people to basically get their nudes or to get them like jerking off on camera. It was a fetish for her own gratification, which is gross and it's very, very skeevy. Um, and it all came to light before the premiere, her premiere episode. And, um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. So the one thing I wanted to talk about, and we were going to talk about this just a little bit, how Sherry Pie's scandal has affected local drag. Mm -hmm. The one thing I can say is because of quarantine, I actually think that it won't affect local drag negatively. Um, Mm -hmm. so, um, I did go to a couple of viewing parties, um, at Stag PDX and Barbarella, uh, to watch with Rockham Sakura, who... I did meet at the Austin International Drag Festival, and she's absolutely a delight, and I love her. Um, me and Donatella actually met Britta Filter in Colorado yeah. at the Underground many moons ago. Many moons ago, when Coco and I were in the thick of our booger phase. I still have videos from the night that I met Britta that, that <laughs> performed. Yeah, I do. It was um, it was when we were at the Underground. I still have them on my channel, and they're privated. But I remember, <laughs> I actually remember, I actually think I had Britta cheering in the audience during the performances. It's so Dang, interesting. It's so crazy. Yeah, I mean, it was forever ago that we met her. Yeah, because and... she'd only been doing drag at that point for six months and she looked a thousand times better than we did. And um, there is one thing that I want to say about um, Britta really quick. And, and that is, um, she is getting a, a lot of hate right now. Um, I know that... She's definitely coming off as someone who is a bit more aggressive. A lot of fans are being like, hey, you know what? She's kind of bitter and she's she's seen as kind of picking on one of the other contestants, um, Aiden Zane. And honestly, I just like, I want to remind fans yet again, um, the queens aren't out touring, so we can't hear this message all the time. If we hear it, it's going to be on social media. But be kind to these girls. Um... A lot of the time, they've worked out what's happening on the ep- episode. Brit has talked about how her and Aiden are good. They've talked things out. Brit has even made a public apology for her behavior on it. You know, it sucks too because Britta also has uh, Leslie Jones, um, who was uh, one of the judges, um, going on and basically like dragging Britta because she doesn't agree with the way that she acts. And honestly, the way that it's being portrayed on the show is probably a bit harsher than Britta's actual feelings. And we all know that Drag Race is a bit of a, a pressure cooker. So I don't think it's really fair to vilify her. Just keep in mind that these these queens have feelings and they're already going through a really hard time with quarantine like we all are. So please be kind. Remember that. Yeah. And I think that like even being on Camp Wanakiki, like I understand how awful those negative comments can be because out of everybody on camp on kiki i probably get the most negative comments and it is rough to have people like dragging you through the dirt when they don't actually know you at all Mm -hmm. and i get it it's reality tv and like people want to be able to communicate and talk about it but it is we do need to remember to be kind to one another uh my final point was that i was going to say that the way that cherry pie affected local drag was um mostly It didn't actually hurt it per se, but I think that it could have Mm -hmm. if the quarantine didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Because obviously all viewing parties probably stopped across the country um, and people weren't really watching Drag Race in a public setting or whatever with all of our straight straight fans who walk into the bar that night to watch the episode and see their favorite locals. So I think it was actually kind of a blessing in disguise. Not saying I'm like happy about the virus by any means. It's been terrible, but... The fact is, it did kind of... We don't actually have to deal with the specific issue, so... Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Donna wants to talk about some of the music that she's been listening to. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like this episode's kind of been about the media that we've been consuming while we've been in quarantine. So there are a couple of newer songs um, and newer artists, too. They've been around for a year or, or two. 
uh, before now, but they have some new music coming out. So I definitely want to plug some of that music that I've been listening to. Check out uh, Summertime by Orville Peck if you're in for a bit of a kind of alternative country western sound. Um, It's really cool music. He's like a gay Johnny Johnny Cash, and I absolutely love his music. Um, He has a really cool, uh, deep bass baritone sound to his voice, Um, and it's just fun music to listen to, uh, smoke a joint to, and chill out with. Uh, Also, I really like uh, the Black Lips new music as well. They have a really cool throwback feeling to them. Uh, It kind of harkens back to some of like 60s, late 60s, early 70s folk music. Um, And the new song that they have out that I really like is uh, Get It On Time by the Black Lips. Um, A couple months ago, they also released a really cool song called Rumbler. So check them out. Um, I'm really loving that music. Also, Little Mix has new music coming out that they're going to release during quarantine. So keep that on your radar because Little Mix is the best girl group of all time. If you disagree, fight me. Just kidding. But really, fight me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, My favorite girl group of all time is obviously Destiny's Child, but I feel like Little Mix has really given them a run for their money. (laughs) Um, Hopefully they stay together and continue being friends. The thing that I love about Little Mix is that they are truly friends. And that's the fun thing, is that they love and support one another through all of their hardships and breakups. And it's like, they are just like genuine to one another and that's the type of friendship that I think that we all we all need. Everyone needs a Perry and a Jesse and a Leanne and a Jade in their in their corner. I definitely agree. Yeah. So we're a little bit past our twenty five minute mark, so we're gonna end our video here with a special surprise for you guys. Yes. We are going to do our very first contest um to where you guys can have the ability to win a free Um, not really a free. You guys have the opportunity to win a hoodie on a Gem of a Secret podcast. Um, it's going to be a merch design that's going to be of our... Actually, we haven't decided yet. Um, we'll probably let somebody choose. But we have a bunch of different merch designs, um, that we are going to be able to give away for you all. So the way that you win... How do they win, Donna? We would like you to like, comment, and subscribe under this video on the Gem of a Secret podcast YouTube channel that this will be posted at. So just like, comment, and subscribe, and you will be put in the running for winning some free merch. So yeah, it's Um, as easy as that. Yeah, and then the contest is going to close officially um, this upcoming Wednesday of when this is posted, which is going to be Wednesday, April 8th at noon. Yep. Um, that's when we're going to close down the contest. Yes, Wednesday, April 8th, 2020, because you know we're going to be doing this for five years because we're going to yes. be famous. Yeah. Um, Wednesday, April 8th, 2020 <laughs> at noon. Um, and that's how you guys are going to be able to win. And so um, please sure to like, share, and subscribe. And like, comment, share, and subscribe. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Ring the bell for notifications. So this is where we end the podcast, everybody. We will see you next week. Um, my name is Donna Tell My Secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. You can find me at, at C-O-C-O-J-E-M Holiday on Instagram. And you can find me at Donatella underscore my secrets. Thank you, everybody. Bye.